Hi, I'm Rob Churchill, and today I'm going to be presenting guided topic noise models for short texts. In this presentation, we're going to do a little bit of a topic model overview, and then get into why we need a guided topic model, introduce our guided topic noise model, and show its effectiveness on real-world data sets. Topic models take a set of documents, like you see here on the left, read through them, and return a set of topics that those documents might be about. Topics are a set of related words, like you can see with magic, that contains wand, wizard, and spell. Uh, these topics can be interpreted directly by people, or used to classify documents, dividing documents into their component topics like you see here on the right. Let's look at how the generative process of LDA works. We're asked to generate a set of documents D. For each document, we're going to draw the number of words, we're also going to draw the topic distribution theta. Then for each word that we want to generate, we're going to draw a topic from theta, and then we're going to draw a word from that topic. In this sense, each word in the document comes from some topic with some probability. To find topics, or to infer topics, we go backwards, looking at each word in each document and trying to guess what topic it came from. So why do we need a guided topic model in the first place? Let's assume we have a social scientist, and let's call her Pam. And Pam has a set of tweets about the 2020 election. She's an expert in elections, and so she knows that there should be a few topics in this data set, without doubt. Uh, so she puts her data set into LDA, and she gets the following topics out. And Pam is confused. Rightfully so. There's a topic about voting. Uh, there's a topic up about parties, but not the right kind of parties. And there's no economy topic, but there are two other interesting topics that she hadn't thought of. So what are we going to do instead? This time, instead of just putting her data set into LDA and letting it run wild, Pam's going to put her data set and the set of seed topics that she knows should be there into a guided topic noise model, and hopefully she's go going to get out a better set of topics, like the ones we see here, where voting, parties, and economy are represented, and maybe some other topics she hadn't thought of are there as well. Let's look at how guided topic noise model works. GTM takes an initial set of seed topics and a data set, and it generates topics based on those two. After it's generated topics, it filters noise so that researchers like Pam can evaluate those topics and see which topics they like, which topics need to be changed, and in doing so they curate seed topics. And so they take that initial set of seed topics, they add words, they remove words, they might even add or remove an entire topic. And they can continue this iteration, generate, filter, evaluate, curate, as many times as they want until they finally have a set of topics that they like. So let's look at the generative process of the guided topic noise model. It's similar to LDA, but this time we also get a set of seed topics to work with. So for each document in the set, we're going to draw the number of words for that document randomly. We're going to draw the topic distribution theta from the Dirichlet distribution. And then for each word in that document, we're going to draw a topic and then if there is a seed topic that correlates to topic TI, we're going to draw a word WI from TI or SI. And what happens there, what that means, is that we're slowly pushing topic TI toward that seed topic. If there's no seed topic, we're just going to do the unsupervised learning version, uh, which is the same as LDA. Uh, so essentially what this allows us to do is to steer seed topics, or the, the topics, the first S topics in the topic set, to those seed topics that they correlate to. And for the other topics in our topic set, we're going to find new topics that might not exist in the seeds. So in order to train a topic model, we iterate through documents observing words and placing them into topics proportional to the topic distribution of the document that they're in. 
This process is called sampling. Gibbs sampling is the sampling algorithm used by LDA and many other topic models. Each time a word is sampled, it's placed into a topic, as you can see on the left. Simple. Now, we're interested in promoting seed words in their respective topics, so we propose a new sampling algorithm for seed words. We call it GPU seed word sampling, GPU being generalized polya urn. Seed topics are like word embeddings in that we have a set of related words. Unlike word, em word embeddings, however, we can be certain that seed words belong together because the user, Pam, said so. This is where the guidance part of GTM comes in. When we observe a seed word, we sample not just that seed word, but the entire seed topic, SI, and place the set into the corresponding topic, TI. Once we've generated our topics, we want to filter noise from the seeded topics and the unsupervised topics. Uh, because social media data and short text in general uh, are notoriously noisy and we want to get rid of as much of that as possible so that our users uh, can better interpret and evaluate these topics. So we take Topic Noise Discriminator, which is a topic noise model designed to get a good representation of a noise distribution, and we put it in an ensemble with the seeded topic model that we just described. We take the noise distribution from TND and the topic distribution from the seeded topic model and we get GTM, the Guided Topic Noise Model. How does that work on the inside? So the way that we do this is with Topic Noise Model Noise Filtering. It's an extension of, to an idea that was proposed for unsupervised topic modeling in ICDM. Uh, this noise filtering process is integral to creating topics that are quickly and easily interpreted by humans for further guidance and seed topic curation. The way that it works is kind of like a scale on one side we put topic frequency and on the other we put noise frequency and you can see that they're scaled by some parameters uh, however the beta distribution essentially takes the topic frequency and the noise frequency on as its two parameters and we do a random roll to get a number that tells us whether a given word should be a noise word or a topic word and we remove noise words from the topics so let's just take a look and see what the effect or the intended effect of the noise distribution is. Let's say we get topics something like this. The red words here are words that we believe are noise words for some reason or another uh, because they exist in this noise distribution generated by topic noise discriminator. And essentially what's going to happen is when we ensemble the seeded model and TND, is these words should hopefully be removed and replaced with better words. So um, in a very hypothetical world, we might start with topics like this, filter noise from them, and get better topics like the ones that we see Pam be happy about. Uh, so the topic evaluation part is Pam's got her seed topics. She's waiting for her seeded topics and her filtered topics. She gets these. Uh, she's happy. She now looks through them and says, are these good topics or not? Uh, maybe I can improve on them. Uh, let's say she does. And she's going to say, okay, I like these words. I like these words. And so and so she's going to add the taxes uh, seed topic. And so she's going to go and curate her seed topics now. And what she's going to do is she's going to take her original set of seed topics and augment them with the words that she liked from the last iteration. So she might add mail and postal, green and political, GDP and banks, and the whole seed topic taxes to her seed topics and run it again. And so in the end, when she runs for however many iterations she wants, Pam will get another, a, a larger topic about voting, a larger topic about parties, economy and taxes, and uh, hopefully all these words, or the vast majority of them, are highly related to these seed topics, and so Pam is finally happy. Now, uh, in our experiments on real data, we used a few different data sets. We used uh, open-ended survey responses about COVID-19. Uh, 
tweets about gun violence, tweets about the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, and tweets about the election 2020. Oh, and also uh, tweets about Black Lives Matter. As you can see, the data set sizes are different here, uh, ranging from 2,000 to 1.3 million. Uh, in pre-processing, we lowercase removed stop words, removed punctuation URLs, deleted posts, and user tags. The state-of-the-art topic models that we test against are the correlation explanation topic model Corex, uh, Cat E category name guided text embedding model, and guided LDA, which is similar to GTM, but it doesn't add feedback and it doesn't do the sam it doesn't add the uh, the GPU secret sampling. Uh, so, let's look at our first metric, topic improvement. How much can we improve on seed topics using a topic model? That's what we're going to ask here. Um, improvement is the augmentation of a seed topic uh, measured in the percentage increase in the size of the seed topic. Uh, so essentially domain experts, the way that we tested this was they curated seed topics as Pam would do and also final topics. And a word counts towards improvement score if it's in the final topic but not in the seed topic. So for example, if we have a seed topic that's 10 words and the total uh, final topic count is 25 words and topic model one adds five of those new words, then its improvement is 50%. It's 50% over the size of the seed topic. Uh, likewise, if topic model two adds 10 words, its improvement is 100%. So let's look. Um, as we can see uh, on the survey data, Everyone's percentage is lower uh, than the Twitter models, but uh, in general, GTM does much better in terms of improvement than the other uh, semi-supervised models. So now let's look at topic entropy. Uh, topic entropy is a variant of Shannon's entropy where we look at the number of digits in a word's rank in a topic, ranked by probability. And we want to see how well each topic model is ranking the words that researchers care about in each topic. So we have here the rank of word W. Uh, you can see it's log 10. And we're just summing over all the words in that final topic. So the higher the score is, the worse off we are. So let's look at topic entropy for the election 2020 data set. As we can see, GTM and Corex are lower, and for the other data sets, COVID-19, gun violence, and BLM, uh, we see the same thing. So GTM and Corex are by far the best uh, on average overall, uh, but GTM beats Corex pretty consistently. Finally, we're going to look at some qualitative results, uh, specifically on the COVID-19 survey data. This survey was about kids schooling during the pandemic, and so we can see here seed topic words were black and green words are words that were added by GTM. Uh, so we can see here less social interaction, too much screen time, and low teacher interaction, which words were added by GTM. And last we have a topic, working parents, uh, that was not a seed topic but that was found by GTM alongside the other seed topics. And uh, this shows the value of GTM not only as something that can verify and augment a set of topics that researchers are already aware of, but uh, it also shows the power of GTM to detect topics that researchers might not otherwise be aware of. So just to wrap up, uh, the guided topic model overview. Uh, guided topic noise model saves researchers time when working with large social media data sets uh, from familiar domains. And seed topics can be incomplete or fully fledged. Uh, so it doesn't matter how big or small of a seed topic set you have. Um, you can start with whatever and get a good improvement. Uh, in the future, we're going to be putting GTM in the hands of domain experts, extending the guidance to adjust for noise, and make, hopefully making a hybrid model with seed topics and some labeled documents. Um, if you have questions, my email is below, and you can use all of this at the following link. Um, thanks to the NSF and MDI at Georgetown, 
and thanks to Pam for lending her likeness to this presentation. Um, and again, the link to GDTM, the, pack, the Python package for our topic models, and my email are below. Thank you.